<clears throat> Hello. Hello. <laughs> and uh, uh, just let me put this off. Uh, as the first time I moderate any discussion, Danish has no need for any presentation. <laughs> as you know, you saw these films. Uh, we know each other since uh, maybe seven years already. I would say 2014. 15. 15. 15. Like <clears throat> this. 2015, uh, in Torino Film Lab, we had a long time available for us uh, to discuss the movie you saw, maybe many of you, uh, yesterday, uh, or maybe previously. Uh, and uh, it's uh, nice that we can have a discussion about Danish, what you saw, and uh, also what you saw just now. Uh, I, I didn't see this with you. I saw that uh, uh, at home uh, quite a while ago. Uh, uh, and I thought that maybe it would be of some interest if I turn the questions Danish asked in the documentary in another Hungary, uh, the people from the village, but also the painter, the artist, uh, if I turn some of these questions towards him. Uh, if you accept that, you remember the questions. Uh, I think I do that because many of these questions, even if I was never asked directly, uh, many of these questions I ask myself and I, I would uh, I would like to know or to reflect on them. Uh, I will start, if you don't mind, with the uh, most important. What is art? <laughs> it's <laughs> complicated, but let's go over uh -huh. that as fast. <laughs> OK. Uh, what, in, what is art in general, you mean? Or, uh... What is <clears throat> art if cinema is mm -hmm. an art? Uh -huh. If you think you aim there? Or, what is uh, art for you? I think uh, maybe uh, I, I would put that for me, cinema is or art is something that uh, I can put my doubts and questions into a form. Or, or I can put, uh, uh, I want to touch the unknown or touch something which I don't know or to search for something I don't know. So it's, it's a way to express something um, uh, yeah, that I don't know the questions to. So I, I'm, I think it's, it's a way for me to get out of myself, to, 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 to yeah. But is there an answer after you perform this expression? Is there an answer to that? Do you find an answer to the end of it? Uh, I, I think uh, you, you can find some feelings, but no, no real answers. Or, or I, I don't know if that's a good, good way to put it, but uh, I mean, no, for sure, you cannot find the answers. It's, uh, it's, uh, you cannot find direct answers, but it, it's a way to understand yourself maybe a bit better. Uh, mm. Even the search itself, or the, the movement of moving out of yourself, or moving out from the comfortable zone of yourself, is something that you when you discover something about yourself and about the world. Or, uh, I mean, for me, this uh, filmmaking is always something moving out from the comfortable. Which is basically what can be checked in every, in every movie I saw of you. And this is also why I found always so interesting to, uh, to talk and uh, to exchange ideas with you. I think, uh, I think it was, uh, for me, the first uh, thing I saw uh, was uh, the shorts of rain. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember very well that uh, what puzzled me completely uh, was, aside from the uh, rather sommer, how do you call it, a very sketchy mm -hmm. relation, almost brutally sketchy relation between the boy and the girl between, between Sofia and uh, Danny. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
what I was surprised was uh, to see was uh, how the relation between him as being invited there uh, or tolerated there uh, uh, for a while, uh, how his relation was with the authority, with the principal mm -hmm. of, the, mm -hmm. of the school after he put fire on, yes. on the field. And uh, I remember very well that uh, the guy said to him, uh, you know, I'm also from an orphanage. <laughs> which amused me to no end, because basically it was obvious from the reaction of the kids that this is bullshit. This is something all the generation would say to sort of connect to the younger generation, you know. Uh, but in somehow previous time, uh, the role of the younger generation was somehow to call the bullshit of the older generation, but he doesn't. <laughs> he just swallows this in a, in a very almost unexpected way. I, I was completely thrilled that he offered no reaction to this, no reaction to him being uh, almost like his existence being justified by someone else. And I thought that this is a quite... Uh, um, to me, it was a very mysterious way for him to, to react because that not saying anything would have meant he leaves. That not saying anything would have meant he's out of it, mm -hmm. and, uh, which it is, which happens at the end. And uh, I, I, I found this quite puzzling. Uh, what is, uh, what is uh, actually, how did you look uh, into those people's life? I know from you that this is not a place where you come from in Hungary. It's just a more defavorized place in the south. It's a type of village uh, you were interested in, but it's not something which is close to you. Mm -hmm. So why did you go there? How did this fit the people uh, you met there? <clears throat> I mean... Uh... Just to answer that I'm not from there, but in a way, I think, uh, just to start from far away, I think everybody in Hungary is from the countryside or has connections to the countryside, uh, or almost everybody. <clears throat> and uh, those feelings that are present in the countryside are something, even if I was born in Budapest, it's something which resonates in me or, or tells something about me or, or where I come from. Mm. And, uh, the question why, that's a good, I don't know, it's good. I mean, I, th I think it's, even if you are in Budapest, you understand, and you, you, you grow up in Hungary, you have this kind of culture of provinciality, or that you are a part of a provincial surrounding uh, in, ma in many aspects. Uh, and uh, I think it's, for me, it's something very important to get close to what is, what does it mean provinciality, or how do you define yourself as provincial uh, because it's, it's something always something very sad, mm -hmm. uh, something very distant, uh, feeling abandoned, uh, but also feeling something very close or something very warm. It's hard to say why, but it's something which is, uh, I don't know, you ca can have some tears about this or I don't know. And, and it's a good feel, can be a good feeling at the same time. So there's this... Uh, but do you give a chance to that world or not? Give a give, chance. Give a chance. Give a chance for the future to this world. You talk about both in soft rain mm. and. Uh, uh, I mean, do wh what does it mean, chance? I mean, that's a. I, mean, have, I think uh, on, on the surface you see that everything is decay, there's a decay, but uh, still, I think these characters are alive or they have some heart or, or in them, and I think this is, this is already something hopeful or. This is something which touches you or touches me, or, or I feel attached to this, and I, I want to find something in this, or I want to find something which is, uh, amazes me. Uh, of course, I look for characters who, who amaze me, or who I feel that... Uh, yeah, emotionally touch me, or I don't know. I mean, uh, not, of course, when you go to the countryside, not everybody is like this. Uh, it, you have to really be... Uh, I mean, I really look for faces who show this kind of archaicness uh, or, or enigmatic uh, feeling. Uh, 
that is something more than the surface. Sure. <coughs> also, because the way they interact is sketchy, and to me, that's putting in them something that they don't explicitly say or they don't explicitly do. do they don't explicitly do. Mm -hmm. But still, I would keep asking, mm -hmm. what is their, what do you, what can you imagine their future is? Me personally, when I write a story, I like to imagine what my characters would be later, hmm. after the story ends. You know. uh -huh. uh, good or bad, or leave, <laughs> left in a state of, you know, <clears throat> Balance, fine, but later? <laughs> I would answer something very general, but uh, I, I mean, I sometimes think that every life is tragic, you know? or, or life is tragic, because we will anyway die, or I don't know. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't mean that it's, uh, it's something bad, you no? Know? It's, uh, I mean, tragic and bad is something, or, or yeah. pessimism and tra tragedy is something different for me. Or, I don't want to be pessimistic. Uh, I think there's a feel of tragedy around, and make, but I, think, I feel that's part of life, or I, I want to look at it as a part of life and not as something uh, that it's something horrible happening. Uh, or uh, I'm, I'm not a person of many, much humor. I mean, you are m uh, much better really? in this. <laughs> but uh, of course, uh, I mean, in this film, there, I mean, uh, yeah. I, 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 it would be nicer maybe to have a little bit more humor uh, that I would have, but uh, mm, of course this touched me also in this, uh, also in this artist, in this Anandza Hungary, that he he, exactly. he uses this kind of um, humor or, or irony or uh, sarcasm to to touch something very emotional. No, because I'm thinking, for instance, okay. now uh, of, let's say, two characters from, mm -hmm. the, from another Hungary, mm -hmm. like a generic young person, the one you asked, for instance, where do you imagine yourself in 20 years mm -hmm. from now? Yeah. Noe. The, huh? He's Noe. Noe. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then I think of the painter uh -huh. who somehow returns there and keeps living mm -hmm. in a place that might be this young person's future, mm -hmm. but apparently he says he will not uh, have this as a future. And I look at, uh, uh, so in one way, those two people being from the same place uh, might be one the older image of the other. You can mm -hmm. think that the young one can have a chance to be there, but somehow he seems to imagine for himself something vague, yet not there, while the old one somehow thinks that his future is to be there and perform his art for a community that don't seem to understand that. Mm -hmm. They respect, they heard of him, he's not outside the community, but he's not inside either, mm -hmm. yes. while being completely from there. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a way, it's a question I would ask also you, uh, how do you imagine yourself in 20 years? Hmm. In the, mm -hmm. Actually, two questions I would ask. How do you imagine yourself in 20 years? <laughs> and do you think that what you do is understood by <laughs> the people? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> it's interesting because as you talked about it, I, I started to think about myself, of course. <laughs> also. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I, I think I, I understand. I mean, this artist says that I don't show my pictures to the village because I don't want to be judged, right? And uh, uh, I think I have very similar feelings, <laughs> honestly. Uh, but it is something that doesn't, uh, that has nothing to do, it's nothing to do with the decision to do art or not do art, I mean, I think it's, uh, or do films or not, uh, not do films, it's, uh, uh, for me, uh, the audience was never a part of a wish to do films. I, I, I was, uh, the audience was never in my mind, uh, or, or, or uh, the people around me that I want to make films for them, I want to make films of myself, and maybe people will like it, maybe not, but it's something which is out of the question in the moment of the, of the decision to make a film. Uh, and. Uh, 
So in a way, uh, to do film or to do art has, has to do only with me and myself and my personal feelings. Um, and of course, it's uh, good if some people like it, but uh, uh, I mean, it's always the most difficult, difficult moment to show a film because it's something that is yours and uh, I don't like to show a film. <laughs> I don't like this feeling of showing because it's, I, I feel that I'm showing myself. Or, uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, I like to be hiding, a hiding person. <laughs> or I enjoy to be a hiding person. But yet you cannot. Yeah, 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 yeah. there's this kind of... <laughs> So, in the end, even if later, it is somehow relevant to ask what do you think that people seeing the film understand what you are looking for in these films? It's not about you caring. I don't, personally, I don't care so much if they understand. I would like to know that they do. I would like to know that they can still make the effort. I don't want them to really understand exactly the thing I want to question. Mm -hmm. I would just like to know that there is still an interest mm -hmm. in that. It's complicated. It's complicated because what you just described is, uh, I, I thought a lot about this. And I think it's the very condition, traditionally, of every artist that fundamentally uh, you want to uh, perform this alone for yourself, mm -hmm. not for an audience. Yet any expression requires a certain audience, and mm -hmm. this audience is always a big question mark. It's a dark, it's a complete void most of the time. Some people do strategies, uh, trying to imagine who those people are, family, friends, uh, 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 I don't know, a vague cinema hall with Un unclear faces <laughs> that they all seem to enjoy and watch in attention, you have this in mind from time to time. And in the same time, while imagining all that, an entire, you know, uh, non distinct mass of people like you, uh, you perform all this alone. You want, in the end, to uh, be left alone and say what you want to say. And this raises a question of to whom actually you belong, because mm. at a certain point, uh, a confrontation between these two concepts, which don't have necessarily a way to come nicely together, uh, will happen. Mm. Some people at any point in the work are going to tell you, no, this doesn't represent us, that is not something uh, we believe about the same things you show. Did it happen to you? <laughs> <clears throat> I think this happens all the time. Uh, uh, of course, I mean, um, um, and it is something which is a constant stress uh, because I don't want to deal with this kind of outside point of view. That uh, because uh, I, I believe, I mean, what I have to watch is my. Uh, I have to be true to myself. And I have to always get back to this feeling that I, the only interesting thing is to be true to myself or true to the, the things I believe. And I have to trust that if I stick to this, it will have a truth for some people. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but there will always be people who will question this kind of, uh, in a way, question me. Uh, um, who do I belong to? That was, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's a very difficult. Uh, it's a constant, uh, I constantly ask this question. <laughs> it's an important question because for the cinema I know and I appreciate, um, there is basically uh, just for the sake of, for the fact that you ask some questions uh, in a place where many people think they already have the answer, uh, uh, all of a sudden, uh, people think that, for instance, you bash the entire image of the country. Mm. Uh, a thing you probably heard, I heard, many heard. Uh, some other things go into, yeah, this is too much effort to watch, basically there is not enough connection, uh, many things which are more open, 
uh, which means, again, many things which are already known and not things you would like to discover, need to be said and put there in. And it goes up to the point where you ask yourself, am I really almost like a traitor of the country? <laughs> am I someone who doesn't like the culture which completely formed mm -hmm. you or me? This is, this is something which uh, haunted you, me, many people I know uh, doing cinema, just because the question asked are for you or for me natural, but in general they are rather uncomfortable mm -hmm. because some answers already exist to the question you ask. Let's take natural light, for instance. Uh, there are some already given answers for how Hungary performed in the Second World War, which means what? Whatever everybody should feel pride, proud with. Some courage, uh, humanity. <laughs> Go on, please. Okay. No, no. Yes, no. I, I, mean, I think there's a, yeah. I mean, if you talk about natural light, uh, I think there's a big difference with, I mean, I think a soldier can be heroic with his uh, comrade. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's totally indifferent from the fact that what happens in the war or what they did in the war. Uh, and I think this is a, uh, a constant misunderstanding about uh, how we think about the war, because uh, um, I think we tend to think that we are afraid that we are the bad guys or we want to be the good guys, but actually it's uh, the, even who were on the wrong side could have been a heroic with their comrades or I don't know, somebody mm -hmm. was shot and could be pulled back from the front line and, and, and that guy was heroic because he saved his comrade. You know? uh, and I think uh, to say, uh, I mean, we have to be, I mean, I really want to be somehow fair <laughs> uh, with things and to name them. And, uh, and I, I don't want to be afraid to name if somebody did something wrong or it seems something bad, but it can, things can be at the same time. Mm -hmm. So somebody can be some heroic, but also commit a huge sin. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> um, I don't think also, I mean, in this film, Natural Light, uh, for me, one of the most important ideas is, I mean, to show these soldiers who kill villagers, Russian villagers, but as we see them, we don't have the image, or we, we start to see humans and not, uh, not uh, evils or, or, I don't know, heroes or evils. Or, uh, so to, to make this kind of uh, ambiguity about uh, a face or, or, mm -hmm. or, or what it means to be, um, so to see comp in a more complex way <laughs> or, 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 or uh, to see, I, I think it's a, Yeah, uh, no, no, that, that this, this uh, is the, in a way, the, the, I think the very important moment in the film is when they burn this uh, barn and we see the faces of soldiers. And, uh, and uh, we see, it's hard to say what they feel, or, but uh, we see human faces. And uh, for me, this was very interesting to show humans doing something horrible. Or, or committing something horrible, and uh, not to show them as uh, perpetrators or I don't know criminals or things like that. Or I I I wanted to somehow touch this sensitive topic of uh... yeah. But for this, in order for this to happen uh, in the film, story-wise and stylistically, uh, Shemetka had to be sent away. Yes. <laughs> because you are with him, so he somehow, you needed to make him not to be part of it. Yes, yes, yes. But still be part of it. But still be part of it, yes. Well, that's my question. How can you can be part of it and not be part of it? <laughs> I try to go there. It's good that we... Uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. Because I believe that this defines also the condition of the artist. Yes. Be part of it and not be part of hmm. it. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know? It's the no, same. That, that's a, that's uh, the most crucial uh, question. <laughs> I agree, yeah. and uh, I, I think I don't have an answer for that. What I mean, uh, uh, I, I I suffer from this, of course.
of this kind of feeling that I'm part of it and I, I, I don't want to be part of it at the same time. So <laughs> it, it can be in, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I, maybe this is a situation for everybody uh, uh, who is inside something and lost, let's say, or doesn't see clearly enough or sensitively enough. I'm thinking we are all not sensitive enough to understand the exact situation. No? Um, and I think we are all lost in a way. Um, I mean, we can judge things from when there's already an opinion formed. Sure. Uh, and it's always going, in my opinion, it should go more and more nuanced as we grow the analysis from the individual, to the relation between the individuals, to the group relation, to the society relation. The conversation should be more and more nuanced and more and more abundant. In fact, the opposite happens. We witness the opposite happens. More the conversation, more we talk about the big things, the societal things, uh, simpler are the official answers. This is why history puts things if you like to say it very, in a very banal way, on the side of the people being victorious. Mm -hmm. This is why it's very hard to understand from, uh, let's say, a historical perspective, how someone can be and heroic and on the wrong side mm -hmm. of the... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. While I believe that conversation should start from here. Mm -hmm from this type of uh, analysis. This is e even very simple, very mm -hmm. simplistic to say. I think things are even more complicated than that. How can one save his camera and expose his own life while being in the same time, indeed, on the wrong side, what we consider to be today on the wrong side of history? And what it means to be on the wrong side of history, when basically you, as Semetka, you are just a guy called from I don't know, in the, in the novel, he is uh, a farmer. A farmer, no? yeah. He's a farmer. So he is just drafted in the military. Yes. He performed his duties for the country. Mm -hmm. So how, what does he have to say into being on the good or the wrong side of history? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he doesn't know this uh, idea. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's, that's very, it's really, really interesting, this kind of thing, that you go into a situation mm -hmm. and you, there's no idea formed about wh where you are and how, what you are doing, what you're doing is wrong or not. It's something that you have to discover by little, little things. And you maybe miss many things on the way, no? Mm -hmm. I think this is the in most interesting thing, is that Shemetka misses things on the way. Or mm -hmm. he, he, he doesn't know it, it, it was a, it was a decision, a place for decision or not. I mean, he, he misses, the, misses the situation where we, he thought he could make a decision, turn right or left. I mean, mm -hmm. there was no, 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 no such situation. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, this is, I think, very interesting because many ways in, we think like we have a clear idea that we can choose this or that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I really wanted to show a situation where there's no decision to be made, like turn left or right. It's, uh, it's something which is, Sure. Yeah, I could run around. Is this, uh, the thing that this uh, the same situation that you were in some way? Because I think many people in the city is good. Natural light. Yes. But if they lose the pills, do you have a similar kind of thing? Who mm -hmm. suffers from similar kind of situation, or mm -hmm. of course, I mean, in a way, I, I think it's a. I want to show people who cannot reflect on themselves clearly, no? Or, or am I right? I don't know. No, yes. Uh, I, I'm somehow fascinated by this to show people who search for some meaning, but they don't cannot reflect on themselves enough sensitively or enough clearly on the situation. But I don't think this is ever possible. I think. I mean, I can ask you the question, but the question is already almost stupid. Do you think, I can ask everybody this question, do you think now that you are on the right side of history? <laughs> it's, I think it's a valid question and a stupid question at the same time, uh -huh. because it's the same thing. I don't think it's possible for an individual, honestly, 
uh, to uh, simultaneously assess his behavior and his choices according to uh, uh, a very, uh, let's say, uh, comprehensive analysis of uh, the larger context of the existence. Mm -hmm. We can all make some efforts in this direction, but I think when it comes to taking decision, it might boil down to principles, instincts, uh, some, you know, uh, in accident uh, happening around, you being there, as it said, in the right time or in the wrong time. Mm. I think when decisions are to be taken, it's very hard to, uh, uh, to really assess uh, how you make them. And yet, more you look from a larger and upper perspective to that, more you feel in, entitled to say, yeah, I was on the right side of history. It's somehow comforting, but I believe it's oh. somehow... <laughs> I, oh. I don't know if you... Uh, no, no, no. no. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I formulate it from a different way, but I think uh, for me, if something in cinema very... Uh, is, or I, 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 I look for is to show a person in time and space uh, trying to make meaning or trying mm -hmm. to create a meaning. And, but it's clear to show at the same time that it's not possible. Uh, this this co contradiction is, I think, um, uh, for me, uh, really touching, or I don't know, it, it shows our limits or it shows our uh, tragedy. <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, so to, to look into somebody's head as he's making, uh, constantly trying to make meaning of things, but is actually late, always late with but the answers. or. <clears throat> but out of pure curiosity, since you said that it's somehow it's something that you dislike to be questioned in the process of making, that you would like to be alone with your questions, cre express yourself, create the film, why did you come to Torino? Why did you want to develop this film in a, in a more like in, in what Torino is a <laughs> workshop where uh, films are discussed in groups. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, how come? I, f I see it somehow as a contradiction, but I don't think <coughs> there is anything wrong in it. It's just I try to make sense. Uh, no, no, I mean, the decision to come to Torino was not something it was a kind of normal decision, I don't know. It, it, it helps your film to be promoted, it helps your uh -huh. blah, 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 blah. It's, it's not only a decision to, but of course, I mean, uh, uh, I have to say that I'm searching for people, or I'm searching for uh, who I trust. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not only me, but it's, uh, it's uh, uh, or, um, I mean, the, the, the thing is that I only trust myself is, is, not, is not coming from the wish. Uh, there's a wish that I want to trust some other people. I mean, there's, it's not, uh, uh, how to put it? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I mean, for example, I met you. <laughs> and, uh, uh, it, uh, Many no, people no. gave opinions there. Many people gave opinions. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was, at a certain point, a complete misunderstanding related to exactly what you just uh, described, the possibility of a character to identify almost like a moment where decision should be taken and decision cannot be taken. Because mm -hmm. either it's missed, either. Many people gave opinions related to that. It's crucial. It would have gone into any direction, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> Strange. Yeah. Let me come back to the previous question because, <laughs> and also if you have questions for me, which are as unpleasant as mine, <laughs> do, do them back. Um, I'm, I'm, I would still like to come to the condition of the artist being and alone and having to still live with people and address to people. I know it's since a long time, this theory that the artist is like this, but I, I think you put it very well. You want to uh, live in yourself. You don't care 
about, uh, you would like not to care about uh, how this is received, mm -hmm. and in the same time, you need to imagine something. Yes. And in the end, you need to even come out, to put it very banal, in a very banal way. In the end, to whom do you belong? How do you, to, you belong to your language? You think you belong mm -hmm. to uh, the people who know the same reality as you? What are your hopes related to the people which are going to see the film, uh, aside from that? What would be the common understanding? Uh, I mean, if I want to be very plain, I would say that I, 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 I want to love the, the people who I show, mm -hmm. or I love them, and I, I, I believe that this love is something which reaches other people, <laughs> or, or uh, I think, uh, or this, let's say, not love, but uh, interest in other people. Mm -hmm. uh, or I, I, I think uh, I really look for characters in a film that I'm very much interested in. Or I, I think that they have something secret to me or something hidden uh, which I'm curious about. Or this, there's this curiosity that leads me. And I, I believe that this curiosity or... Uh, so I, I, I think for me it's something very important that uh, in the films I think they're quite improvisational because I don't move the characters from like already, I don't know them. I, I, I want to discover them through, through the film. I, I want to get to know them more through the film. It's a, the film is a way to you know, go deeper in them. And it's not something that I, I imagine something and I know everything about them and I try to move them like in a chess uh, game or I don't know. or. Uh, so I, I want to be on the same level with these people who I want to show, and this is something fascinating for me, this process, and I believe that this is something where I'm attached to the world, mm -hmm. with this curiosity, with this, uh, let's say, love or interest, or, uh, and of course it's not only to people, it can be also to, to time and space and uh, little details, uh, colors. Uh, I mean, the world around me is, is something very interesting for me, or, or I'm curious about the, everything around me. Uh, I, I'm going in directions where I feel that I can discover something more, or I can show something more of somebody, of something, or no, or, or yeah, yeah, no, mm -hmm. I understand. For for soft rain, I have a curiosity. Uh, you scripted probably their interactions. They speak rather little, <laughs> so uh, they are probably also. Uh, able to act it, even if they are not professional actors, they will act the interactions you mm -hmm. scripted. How much of the interactions uh, you felt like uh, modifying or putting when uh, one on set with them? Mm -hmm. How much you, um, or what, more precisely? Um, Did they surprise you? Of course, I mean, this is the aim, to, to have this surprise. <laughs> Or, or, or to create a situation where they can be surprised, or, I mean, uh, I, I would say that I made many mistakes in that film too, or, or I think there are some dialogues which don't, are quite uh, not working so well, uh, we, when I stick to the written dialogue. Um, but, for example, there's this moment, for example, about this uh, boy with the school, director of the school, yeah. uh, when he's asking, um, do you know your father, or, or I mm -hmm. don't remember exactly the question, but and he says, uh, no, uh, what is he answering? Uh, he died, or I don't know. Anyway, I mean, it, it was something that was his personal story. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, he, in a way, he's uh, telling what he, happens in his life. So you know, mm -hmm. in, this kind of filmmaking, I think, requires people uh, that they talk about themselves and not something uh, fiction fictional. For them. Yeah. So I really use their own identities and also with Shemetka in, in mm -hmm. Natural Light, but also uh, in, in Soft Rain, these, the, the stories of the background, or I, there's no background, but the, the little background of the people are similar to who they are. Mm -hmm. It's not something different from them. It's, uh, they, they represent themselves in the film, in a way, mm -hmm. uh, I think. But, and, and there's uh, some other situations, for example, uh, uh, when the boy and the girl meets in the end of the film uh, and the boy has to t touches the breast of the mm -hmm. girl, it is something which happens there and now. It's something which I think uh, 
it was something uncomfortable for them to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's very interesting to, to record this, this kind of... When but you they... asked them to do that, yes. Yes, yes. That was scripted from the beginning. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. yes. It's interesting because there was nothing biographical into in that part for, between that. Problem, yes, yes, no? yes. No, that's true. Mm -hmm. It's so, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. It's a, it's a relation. I mean, I, I'm not uh, I'm not at all surprised. Uh, I have to say that uh, when you aim at some solidity on screen. And uh, those people are not uh, uh, into any, are not experts in representation. They are just amateurs, as you yes. call it. But mm -hmm. actually, they are actors because they act something. Uh, having them saying their stories and uh, representing their own background makes, makes them really solid, and you trust them as you trust them in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For mm -hmm. sure. So, that I, I, I'm, I'm not surprised, and uh, this is something uh, I think we did for the first time recently in the last movie I told you about, we just filmed. Uh, for the first time, because until then, for me, it was the opposite as for you. It was scripted, scripted mm -hmm. uh, to the, yeah. But indeed, the moment where amateurs, like people, real people come into film and they act something, it's better to have their backgrounds. <clears throat> yeah. In natural light, for example, uh, if yeah. we, it, it was even more interesting this, because we collected many real farmers, like cow, cow far, from cow farms and the pig farms from the Hungarian countryside. And we took these people. These people, there were many illiterate people who could not even write or read. Uh, there were people who, who never been to Budapest even, or yeah. uh, even to the closest town. Um, I mean, we were especially looking for these kinds of people, and uh, uh, we took them several thousand kilometers away to Latvia, uh, where they were living in a camp. Uh, we dressed them in a uniform, we gave them a weapon, they had a military training, and uh, they really didn't enjoy it. It was something that was, uh, I think something very similar happened that, uh, that happened to those soldiers 70 <laughs> years ago, uh, who were taken away from their surrounding, uh, uh, and uh, given a weapon and a gun, uh, or a, a, like a uniform and a very heavy equipment. And uh, actually these people, these, uh, these farmers who we took to, uh, to Latvia, I mean, they didn't speak, of course, the Russian language and Latvian language surrounded, mm -hmm. so they were really isolated. Uh, they were feeling insecure, and basically they wanted to go home as soon as possible. This was their, I think, uh, I remember when we discussed uh, with mm -hmm. you what is Shemetka's aim. We were searching for it, and uh, I mean, he wants to go home as soon as possible. This is, this is his aim. Or he, and it was so interesting that for these actors that we took to Latvia, very far, they never traveled, they never been on an airplane. I don't know. Yeah. So we took them there, and for everybody, this was the number first aim to go soon, go home as soon as possible. And even when somebody uh, finished the shooting, there was a big party to celebrate that he's going home. <laughs> so, uh, and they were extremely happy. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. They were extremely happy to go home. Uh, they don't want to be in a film anymore. It's not something that they... That's quite smart. You made them basically go through a complete drafting. Yes, they yes, were yes, 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 yes. It was a military... <coughs> but it, it was in a way by accident. Yeah. It was not really thought through, but this is what happened. And I think it really helped the film, in a way, or, or these people, to be far away from home. Or, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, well, what helps the film is that, uh, uh, what helps situations like this is that uh, people who have a real biography uh, somehow manage to Im embody this biography in everything, their nails, the shape of their hands, mm -hmm. yes. uh, their face, somehow they all bear the marks of the work they did, and the, this is not something you can do with makeup, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, this always works uh, in a very solid way. Mm -hmm. So, and is it uh, I, to go back? Do you, I mean, I ask what you intend to do in or where you see yourself in twenty years. But uh, the question has a smaller scope. Uh, how is the direction you go in with the cinema, with the films you want to make, with the next one, with the next ones? Do you have a clear path? It's Hmm. The interest is clear. Uh, the way to do it is the same. 
also <coughs> amateurs uh, <laughs> of, uh, in <coughs> I don't know, but uh, I, I'm still very interested in this kind of filmmaking. Uh, I mean, I'm fascinated by this kind of filmmaking, I have <laughs> to say, or it's something which drives me forward, but uh, I don't want to, I don't imagine what kind of films I will make. Uh, or, uh, I mean, if, the question is about amateurs. I would like to go in this direction uh, even more. But the question uh, is only trivially about yes. amateurs. Yeah, 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 the yeah, yeah, question yeah. is about trying to uh, keep on screen this mixture of real life. Yes, definitely. No, no, no. Uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's also about me, that I'm a person who, who, who is observing things. I like to observe. And uh, I can, maybe I'm good in observing, I don't know, <laughs> uh, but I'm not good in like uh, making uh, philosophy or making, I don't know, or, or, or writing a book. Uh, I, I, I really enjoy observing and I think I have to go in this direction and this will take me somewhere. Mm -hmm. Or I want to be free in observing things around me and uh, or this is the most precious for me, this kind of being in observation. Now, no, I try to, I try to, uh, to, every single time you answer the question, I try to uh, help myself answering my own similar question <laughs> with your <laughs> answers. And, and most of the time fits, uh, I have to say, and most of the time makes me uh, also sometimes uh, feel uh, a bit, you know, uh, a bit wrong about some choices. Uh, or some things I, I thought um, I keep dear about uh, uh, about films. I mean, observation for me, let's say, observation as I understood it, can put me in a like endless pleasure of you know. And there is a point where I see a situation that has in as a nucleus a bit more meaning. And then I think maybe I can replicate this situation. Hmm. I can make a film mm -hmm. out of this situation yes. uh, by reconstructing it or by recomposing uh -huh. it. Hmm. But it never occurred to me that actually I can leave the situation as it is and just nudge the people which are there uh, in order to carry the meaning ahead. That hmm. is, to me, I have to say, quite new idea. Hmm. Uh, me being on the scripting side <laughs> and not on the, yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so for me the process is always like, first I observe, they are try to understand what I just saw, mm -hmm. and then I try to remake it so this understanding comes maybe, I don't know, clearer. But I think what you describe as a process is a, uh, much more powerful shortcut. <laughs> Let's put it like this. Yeah, because they are already there and they uh, carry already uh, hmm. a lot of the significance. I don't think, for instance, that the story of uh, of Sofrain would have worked with uh, by being scripted. I don't mm -hmm. think it would have ever worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. It would have been uh, just a banal story about what? Hmm. Actually, how do you Tell the story of Sovereign. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I, I, maybe that could be said to other films as too. Yeah. <laughs> to natural light, maybe also. Yes, no completely. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. yeah. Hmm. It's, it's difficult to, to basically pitch a story of, like Sovereign. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, because also yesterday there was a question, in a way, uh, uh, by, uh, before the film, mm -hmm. Natural Light, the screening of the film, there was a question to me by the Carlo, the. Mm -hmm. And that uh, how do we choose the, the lighting and the, the camera and everything uh, for the story? And I actually, I think it's, uh, I know I want what kind of uh, lighting and what kind of camera I, I or, or what kind of image and space and time I imagine, and the story is found after. And uh, maybe this is why I, I, I went to Torino Film Lab too. <laughs> 
to find a story for <laughs> uh, this kind of... Uh... You had the book. Yes, I had the book, of course. You had the book, but yes. the book is not that. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. no, I'm just saying that I think I, I, I really know how I want to look at people or, I, or I, I'm how I want to observe them and, and the atmosphere of that is, is something the strongest in me and I look for, uh, yeah. <laughs> but in another Hungary, how much actually you looked at these people? Because oddly enough, I think it's, if I am to look at uh, the documentary mm -hmm. compared to the fiction, when in the documentary your, well, the subjects of your observation are staged, funny enough. They mm -hmm. are staged in front of the camera, sometimes mm -hmm. for uh, almost like a moving portrait, mm -hmm. fixed moving portrait, uh, sometimes as a family, as a group uh, yes. portrait. And, you know, sometimes when they are asked questions, they are put in front of the designative object of their activity. You know, mm -hmm. the one who says that he spends the day at the computer is in front of the computer. They, you know, and it's, it's odd to know that uh, ob observing people leads you to make real people in the documentary staged as if they are. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in the fiction, the real people just get <laughs> What, uh, did, what did you observe more with this? I got very curious, I have to say. Uh, funny enough, I got very curious after seeing uh, another Hungary about more about these people. Hmm. I, I mean, uh, about the style of the film, I think uh, it was, we wanted to do something about this painter. And uh, the style of the painter is also this very staged kind of, uh, so the, the stage, the staged uh, filmmaking is connected to him, I think. And um, you make the connection at the end, yes, when yes. you see that he is taking the picture and arranging the yes. yeah, for his. Ah, that yeah. is clear. Yes. Um, yeah. You wanted to make it about uh, the painter. No, no, no. I mean, your question yeah. was why? Why do I show these people so staged yeah. in a way? Um, it's a good question. <laughs> um, I mean, there's something fascinating about it, but uh, uh, about uh, I mean, for for to show somebody in his own surrounding and in the space where he lives, what surrounds him. And uh, it shows much more than, uh, I would say, to uh, this kind of feeling of stuck in time or this feeling of, uh, I mean, I, I really enjoy the idea of, uh, uh, in, in both fiction and documentary, the idea that uh, motionlessness or this kind of mm -hmm. stillness. Uh, and uh, it is, I mean, I, 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 I don't like to show people uh, who, uh, like a kind of dramatic uh, arc where people are in line with their uh, actions. Mm -hmm. I want to show uh, when they are uh, apart from their actions or they, they don't have this kind of connection with what they do, that there's always something uh, going on in them what is different from what they do. So mm -hmm. even if there's a computer there, we don't think about him make, him doing or him playing on the computer. We think no. about something else. And uh, it's always this really interests me, I think, this kind of distance between the action and the, uh, and the, and the so not to be, uh, yeah, like, like, not like a hero or not like a, when with a hero we are together with the action, no? that we, he, we know that he will survive or he will not survive or he will have a success or not success. And, and, and I think I want to show you something different when this kind of, uh, uh, the, it, somehow this action is separate from the, the uh, yeah. Me personally, I thought that the, uh, the characters are staged precisely because they are, the objects of the painter. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but 
I thought that they are the objects of the painter in the sense that your interest and your, let's say, identification was more towards him as a character than towards them as an observation of how life is for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was more like what life is for them in to what matters to the painter because the painter needs to understand hmm. uh -huh. what hmm. actually, what type of meaning he's coming back to the place where he belongs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, has for these other people which are basically like him, only had a different path in, uh, in life, you know, almost like this, which is basically the same question I asked you, <laughs> <laughs> related to what do you think is the, uh, let's say, uh, what do you think people understand around you about what you do? It's, I mean, that's a very hard question, I know, mm. but, mm. Uh, but I think it somehow reflects in another Hungary. This mm. is not about the another Hungary. This is, uh, this documentary is the fact that the Hungary basically is alien to the artist. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's not like, a, oh, it's not the, this is not the another Hungary because it's not the beautiful Hungary that the officials would like yeah, to yeah, promote. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not about that. It's about the fact that for the artist, this is an alien world mm. while being completely his. Mm. Which is exactly what we discussed before, yeah, the yeah, condition yeah. of <laughs> being <laughs> alone and being needing to <laughs> belong to, I don't know, something deep, your place, uh, uh, be it your ethnicity, being your language, being your culture, being your loved ones, family, or, <laughs> yeah, this is, <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> like... And give you some, huh? give you some water. Give me some water. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe let's ask if somebody wants a question. Sure. <laughs> but maybe not. <clears throat> ah. Does anybody have a cash question? Yes, please. <laughs> somebody wanted here, but maybe she left already. Okay. Sorry? Somebody wanted to ask, but I think she left. She had to leave. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just saw it. As I have a completely dead <laughs> peripheric vision on my right, I didn't see that. Yes? Uh -huh. yeah. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Yes. Yes. It was a very simultaneous, uh, the documentary and the fiction. I mean, they were two different. Uh, in the beginning, it was two very different projects. Uh, this documentary I wanted to make about the artists, and uh, the, the, the original title of the film was Spontaneous Design, and it was most that he is like uh, taking photographs of the village, uh, very strange. Uh, uh, paintings and houses, and so it was more like about this spontaneous village design. <clears throat> um, and at the same time, I was looking for the characters of this short fiction film. And the idea to do this short fiction was to actually 
uh, completely discover a community, village, village, a village community, and find all the actors and, and in this area. So uh, actually, I, I'm fascinated by this idea. I don't know if it would work on a larger scale, but to actually use the members of a community to become the part of a film. Uh, and uh, so I, I spent a lot of time also in the neighboring villages to discover, I mean, to discover the area. And uh, through that, uh, this documentary also changed because uh, I, I met so many interesting things or so many things that was uh, amazing to me or fascinating to me. Um, but so then we did the, the fiction and, and, and we did this uh, documentary like a half a year later, but I had a big knowledge, like I, I was uh, scouting this area for a year and I, I met a lot of people and uh, it was very well researched. Uh, so I knew that I want to go to that pub and uh, to this house and... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if the question was, was about this, but... To me, that indeed was a surprise because I started viewing it with uh, uh, expectations, the stereotypical expectations, that exactly because he's someone who knew the world and had an exhibition and comes from there, he will be immediately respected by the community. And, uh, <laughs> and as the movie advances, I, you see that those are two separate, two separate worlds. And uh, he speaks about his issues, sometimes also with the countryside, and they speak about their own issues. And when asked directly if they know the painter, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they don't know the painter. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, uh, um, do you feel, of course, you did that for many reasons. Once you were interested in the painter. Second, you saw the community and it was an excellent place to scout for mm -hmm. uh, and also for observation. But would you be more siding with a painter or more interested in the painter and you would identify, let's use this word, mm -hmm. would you identify more with a painter or would you identify more with the people from the place? <laughs> <coughs> Because in, in, in the natural light, you, it's quite clear that you identify with Semetka. Yes. Which also is like the people from the place, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a non-professional, mm -hmm. someone who's transplanted in a reality which is not very different from his. Sorry, yeah, so that's the question, my question. You think there's a difference, a strong difference between the identification with the artist and the... In the documentary, yes, mm -hmm. I think, because they are his object. Mm -hmm. The villagers are his object of interest and yours. <laughs> <laughs> but so you feel that I identify more with the artist? what you want to say, or? I, uh, me, uh, I think yes, but <laughs> I only by making this calculation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think you give them an equal screen, if you like. You, yes. As uh, it was said, you distribute them very homogeneously, 
both sides. Mm -hmm. But because he has a gaze on them and you have a gaze on them, somehow the balance is in this side. Mm -hmm. Somehow it feels like you are on his side. Mm -hmm. well, of course, he finishes the film and we finish the film with him. And it is something uh, which I ident identify with this kind of feeling, with uh, what he pronounces uh, exactly, that uh, is this a tragedy, what's happening? And what exactly does he say at the end? What does he say exactly? Because I, I don't remember the exact what, words. What he, he says that... Uh, he thinks it's not a tra tragedy. I mean, that's what he says. It's not a tragedy. Uh, that these are the atmospheres that he was born with, these are the, I don't know, the smells he was born with, even if they are remains only of what was before, it is something what is his and which he likes or he enjoys, and it, it's not a tragedy what's happening, he says. Uh, I mean, he said he could move away, he could, uh, but what, what would happen if he would move away? I mean, what would be different in his life? Uh, that's what he's, he describes, mm -hmm. because, um, Yeah, even if they are only remains of uh, this kind of culture that he grew up with, or I don't know, this village culture. Uh, it's, it's something that is his. Uh, I find this basically a very emotional relation mm -hmm. of an artist with his own origin, culture, soil, something that one would call uh, Deep love for yeah 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 mm -hmm. for mm. yeah and uh, yeah I, I don't want to sound patriotic in any kind of way I just try to point out what makes an artist belong to a space mm -hmm. and uh, uh, both in terms of what society can benefit from this but also in way an artist can benefit from it by feeling somehow rooted mm -hmm. in a place or in a language. I believe that, uh, sure, it's not a tragedy to, to go somewhere else, but I believe, in a way, you know, some underpinnings disappear, the control over the language, the small details, the, even the observation, I believe, changes place when you, uh, changes, how do you call this? It's almost like a different engine of observation where you observe things which you don't know already or you don't guess already good enough. I think you observe them with a different type of curiosity, with a more trivial curiosity, uh, rather than the things you already know somehow. Mm -hmm. So I, this is also why I think the, uh, I wanted to stress that I think you identify with artists more than with, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> with those people, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in a way, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's similar, I think, in this kind of feeling is similar in natural light and also soft rain a bit that uh, deep inside there is this uh, love of these people or, or, I don't know, or, or my love towards these people or my, my love towards the, the, I don't know, or, uh, or, or towards these atmospheres and towards these uh, gestures. And um, I mean, there's always something dark coming in, <laughs> in all of my, my, my ideas. Uh, there's a feeling of darkness around. But still, there are these gestures which give hope. Or there, there's, there's, uh, it's true. <laughs> there is another film which nobody saw, probably, but it's available online. It's available, it's for, like open on Vimeo. It's uh, the Berlinska Fuga. I think? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's since, for, since a while ago, maybe 10 years ago, no? It was in 2011. 10, 11? 8 or 9. Or 2009. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it's a short film. You can look for it. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Mm -hmm. I found it uh, extremely emotional and e efficient mm -hmm. uh, at it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that one. I think for that one, it's very difficult to say. Of course, you see that the people are the real people. 
and this uh, follows the story of a, uh, a man from a family who goes makes money making money in Berlin by playing very well the accordion. Mm -hmm. Yet it feels like a complete fiction, mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. It feels like a, a story being told with an emotional core which is articulated in all its understanding. I mean that story being told as such doesn't seem to miss anything from any form of, uh, it doesn't seem to uh, have uh, a part where you don't know what happens in people's heads. Hmm. They seem to be all applied to very fundamental gestures, either that they skate in the family hmm. or they, yeah, or when he plays in Berlin the yes. accordion, it all seems to be attached to the core of the movement hmm. of what they do. And, uh, uh, I wanted to ask about this film. How it, how did it, who are those people? What are, uh, how did it come to into existence for you? <clears throat> it's, it's, it's interesting because it's connected to Berlin. Uh -huh. I was here for a year, and I met this uh, Ukrainian guy from Donetsk in the U-Bahn. Uh, yeah. He was playing Bach uh, on the accordion, and um, I met him. I spoke to him, and. Uh, I had the idea to visit him in Donetsk. I asked him if I can visit him in Donetsk. So I went with a cinematographer, a colleague of mine, when we spent two weeks in Donetsk, in his apartment. Uh, he spoke very bad German, and I spoke very bad German. So we moved into his living room uh, <laughs> uh, without being really able to communicate. And they were amazingly open with us, and they lived in this horrible outskirts of Donetsk, uh, very apocalyptic for me at that time. Uh, it was before the war. And basically we did the film in two weeks in, the, in his apartment. And so then later in Berlin? Yes, or yes, yes. Previously yeah. in Berlin while he plays yes, uh, Bach yeah, on... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it, it was something, uh, in a way also a bit similar journey for me to go into a life of people who I don't know. And uh, uh, I mean, it, we got an amazing a lot of openness and uh, from them. Or, or, or uh, I mean, it was amazing for for me uh, as somebody totally stranger to go into a life of a family um, and to be trusted and being. Uh, uh, I mean, it was an amazingly uncomfortable situation <laughs> because uh, it was a very small apartment and uh, we lived in their apartment for two weeks. So but it was something very emotional, mm -hmm. on the other hand, for both of us, and, and for them too, I think, uh, or I don't know. <laughs> it's quite spectacular, yeah. because uh, uh, it's uh, as the thing, as uh, the soft rain, as, uh, as also uh, uh, natural light, that one functions, not only has the same procedure of making, but fun functions in the same way. It's an unpeachable story, basically. Hmm. You cannot tell what this is all about. You can tell what is this with, more like this. Hmm. This is a film with a guy who plays the accordion but comes from a family and he has a daughter and they skate sometimes. And <laughs> this is basically how it is, <coughs> which is something which can be said also about natural light. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it's not that there is no story. It's that there is no peachable uh, arc. There is no peachable... Mm -hmm. Uh, hmm. And I find I find this quite fascinating, and I have to say that uh, it's uh, I think it's a major strength because I believe that in uh, in how uh, these things exist articulated, but without any detectable almost trace of a say story mini arc of a story which would predictably ends the film, mm -hmm. you don't know where it goes. You mm -hmm. don't ever know where it goes. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I, I mean, this is something I'm really fascinated about, to, to not to know where the story goes. I, I, I have to say I'm really irritated by stories which show me after 10 minutes that where, where it goes. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, I, 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 maybe this is going too far, natural light in this sense, but uh, uh, I really enjoy this idea that we don't know where this story will take us, or this has this kind of, uh, yeah.
It's quite the same mm -hmm. also in soft rain. Yeah. You don't know where it goes. Mm -hmm. Not even when he puts fire to the... Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't know where it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, fascinating, indeed. Sure. Oh, yeah, no, it's pleasure. I mean, it's, <laughs> okay. it's absolutely okay for, for me. It started with maybe a rather unpleasant, um, um, unpleasant questioning like this, but <laughs> I, I mean, maybe you ask me stuff <laughs> back. Hmm. Thank you, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs>